Hey everyone, Bill Nichols here, Bill Nichols TV. Let's talk Lightroom. It's been a little while since I've done a new Lightroom video and today I wanna show you some shortcuts to apply edits from one image to another image or to a whole range of images and this can help you in editing time lapses, editing studio shoots, landscape shoots where you're staying in the same location overall. Just give you some really good quick workflow tips and ideas. Short video today, right to the point. Let's talk Lightroom. All right, so let's jump in here today. So what I've done is, when I went down to San Francisco a couple weeks back, I was in my hotel room, and on the end of the trip, the last day, I just set my camera really quick on a tripod, shot the city out to the bay through the window. There were some clouds. I thought, oh, maybe this would be a good time lapse. I think I shot about 3,000 images. And then after that, I'm gonna have to edit all of those because they're not gonna look the way that I want. And a time lapse is a perfect example for what I'm gonna show you, but you could do this in a studio shoot. You could do this with a landscape shoot, with an architecture shoot, any kind of any kind of a shoot. And um, but there are different things that you'll want to do and not want to do. So I'm going to walk you through that. So what we're really talking about today is editing the photo, then taking those settings, those adjustments that you've made, and syncing those across another set of images, or a single image, or a range, or selection, or whatever you want. All right. So let's start right here. This is in San Francisco. I'm at the Hilton. I think we're in like the 41st floor or something. So. Uh, I just shot this straight out the window. You can see the clouds, good clouds, good city. The city's pretty well exposed. The clouds are a little bit overexposed. Then over here, you have this reflection in the window. You've got another reflection here. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Let's start off with this as if um, there are some general things that I wanna do that I wanna take over to the images. Then we'll get really specific. So a lot of times, you'll bring a set of images in, let's say like this, and you'll want to do some things with some adjustments that'll affect the entire image, not local areas. So we could set the white balance, like find a general gray area here. That's actually set pretty close already. Or we'll just go auto. Now these were shot in JPEG, not in RAW, only because I was shooting thousands and I wanted it to be pretty quick. I don't want to have to open up 3,000 RAW files. So we've got our white balance here. So I've done that. Um, let's just, as an example, let's just let it auto tone itself. Okay. Let's bring. Um, I'm not gonna really change the sky at this point or anything. And let's just throw in maybe some medium contrast here. Okay, so I've got this and maybe I wanna bring down my whites a little bit more so that they're not blown out. If you wanna know how I'm showing this uh, peaking right here, as I hold down option and then click on the whites, you're gonna see it show where the whites are clipping and I just bring those down generally until they're not clipping. So with the blacks, so I can just, so if I don't have any black in the image, I'll generally click this while I'm holding down option and keep going to the left until I see some black area starting to show up. Then I know that I'm getting those deep shadows and then I'm also getting my highlights are right. So right now, nothing in this image is clipping even though part of it looks blown out. Let's, um, let's just reduce this exposure just a little bit. And um, let's call that good, or let's do one more thing. What we should have done to start was enable profile corrections. Came in here, said Canon. Now we got it way wrong because this was shot on the Canon 5D Mark IV. Lightroom doesn't have the profile yet. So I'm gonna go in here and tell it that this is a 2470 F2.8. And there you go, so you can see the difference before and after. Okay, so I've done these basic image changes and I wanna apply this to this set of images here. So I have it right here on this first image and then if we go through to the images next to it, you can see big difference already in these photos. From the slight barrel distortion to the way the clouds look, um, to the buildings, to everything else. So let's um, copy this image. So if I hit Command C or Control C on a PC, or I can go to Edit Copy and go to uh, Settings, Copy Settings, any of those. So I'm just gonna hit Command C. It pops up this copy dialog and it asks me, what do I wanna copy? So I'm not gonna copy everything because I didn't use everything. So I'm gonna go Basic Tone, I did that. I did White Balance, I did Tone Curve. I didn't change any clarity or anything like that. I did do uh, basic lens profile corrections. I haven't cropped it. I didn't do any local brushes, um, anything like that. So I'll copy these. Now what I do is with that image selected, I can hold down shift, select the rest, and just go, oh, go right over here to sync. It'll ask me what I want to sync. It chooses those same ones because that's what I just chose. Say synchronize, and you can see it popping across here. And now that same edit has been applied to all of these images. If you're applying this to hundreds or thousands of images, you've got to um, 
it's going to take a while. And sometimes if you start doing something else, that sync will fail and you'll need to restart it. That's all right. You can just go back in and restart it. So one thing that I did here was I really took whole image edits and applied them to a base image and then applied them to the rest. Now, because a lot of times, like if I'm shooting a portrait, let's say that I'm shooting a portrait of somebody um, and I have, let's say, 100 images of them, chances are when I bring it in, I'm probably going to want to change the white balance a little bit if it was off in the camera. I might want to change the exposure some to get a better vignette, like what's behind me, right, so I could increase the exposure or decrease it. I might want to apply some general clarity to the whole image, maybe soften their skin a little bit, something like that. But they might have a blemish. Right, so let's say a blemish or their hair, and they've got one hair that's coming off, and I remove that with a spot removal tool, and I remove a blemish with a spot removal tool. I can copy those local brushes and paste them to the image, but in a situation like a portrait shoot, not a good idea because it puts those exactly where they were. So if that subject moved, now let's say that that adjustment was here for the hair and right here for the blemish, when they move, it's still going to be here and here, so it's going to apply it in the wrong areas and it's not going to look right. But in an image like this, where the entire image is relatively still, the horizon's staying the same, the city's not moving, I can go in here and do some pretty serious local adjustments and apply those across to all the images. So let's do this. But let's just go back into this base image. So now we have this base image. We've done a little bit of an edit. Let's build on it. I'll show you some things that you probably wouldn't do if your camera was moving around. So one thing I like to do right off the bat with any type of landscape is I'm gonna throw a neutral, uh, a graduated neutral density filter in here. So I'm just going to come down. This is going to be too much right off the bat, but I'm going to um, bring this down to where it's affecting the buildings a little bit, but not much. I want to keep it pretty close to the sky. So I'm going to bring it down. And I have the exposure set on this down four stops so I can see where it is. That's not where I'm going to go with it. So let's bring it up here. We'll bring it down just a little bit about a stop. Let's bring the highlights down. Let's bring the shadows. Shadows are good where they're at. Let's see if we want to change the whites at all. Maybe a little bit. Maybe bump a little bit of clarity in here. Maybe a little dehaze. Let's see. Yeah, that's too much. And then for the clouds in the sky, I want to add a little bit of a custom temp on here. So I'm going to cool it down a little bit, give it some more blue. Just a little bit, give it a little bit better sky. So now what we've got is we went from, um, you know, we went from that to that. Not a big change, but a little change. But you can see because my, my horizon is going to be the same on all of these that I can apply that and then I can copy that around to everything else. So let's say now that I want to do another graduated filter but from the bottom because there's some things that I want to do here. So I'll bring this back up. I kind of want to counteract what I did in this little region. All right, so let's bring this up. I'll bring this up just a little bit so it's a little higher exposure. Change the contrast just a tad. On this, I'm actually going to add a little bit of clarity not go crazy like this, but you know, add some. So right here, and then maybe increase the sharpness a bit. Since the city, there's a bunch of straight lines and all that. Add a little sharpness in here. And, uh, and I think right now that looks pretty good on that filter. And then one thing that I definitely need to do on this image is to crop it. So I pressed R, brought up my crop tool. I'm gonna hold down Shift so I keep the same aspect ratio. I'm gonna grab my little handle here. And I'm just going up and cropping to where this triangle, like this reflection, and this reflection right here are out of the way. All right. So right there, press enter. So now there's the image. I think that's a much stronger image. Let's look at it when we first started. There's the base image. Now we have this really quick edit. And, um, and if we go over to these, to like to an image next to it, you can see it doesn't look as strong in my opinion. This might have some pieces that are overdone because I'm doing this really quick. But now what I want to do is I'm just going to hold down Command C again to copy. And I'll just really on this, I'll just say check all. Like just took, take whatever I, I did. So you'll see in here crop. So it's going to copy the crop. I didn't do any spot removal. But if I did in here, I could have copied that because everything's pretty much staying the same. Uh, noise reduction. I didn't do any noise reduction. Um, I didn't change the process version, anything like that. But that's all right. I'm just going to copy all of these. And now let's just look at these images. So there's one. Right there's one. There's one. So let's take that first one, select it, hold down shift, go to the end, say sync, synchronize, and you can see them down here in the film strip. They are all done. So now if we go through here, we've got all of our images are the same as far as the edit goes. 
And that's it. So different things that you'll want to do depending on if you're working on people or architecture or maybe you're doing a studio shoot for products or something like that. Um, you know, another way that this is, so one more thing that this is really good for, if you're locked out on a tripod and you're in a studio, let's say that you, um, or you have uh, another one that this is really good for is that you have dust spots on your sensor. So no matter where your camera moves, those dust spots are always in the same place. You can grab those dust spots, you know, uh, spot remove all of them, copy that image, and then just paste that across all the other images. All those, all those dust spots will go away. So just another idea. There is some other dust spot stuff that you can do. We'll get into that later. But just a really quick video today, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think below. If you have any questions with Lightroom, ask them below. I uh, try and answer everybody. Coming up this week, some really cool stuff. Uh, I've got a GoPro Hero 5 Black in session. Karma's on its way. And um, I'll be comparing those against the Hero 4 Black and the Hero 4 session. Some really cool stuff already in initial test. And I can tell you that the voice control feature for the GoPro, total game changer. It works almost flawlessly. It works incredibly well. Took it on about a two hour mountain bike ride. I think I shot about 60 clips. Never touched my GoPro. So very strong there. Uh, some Typhoon H stuff might be coming up this week. I am going to be talking about the Epson BT200s hopefully tomorrow, tomorrow or Wednesday. And then um, just some other cool stuff. So you guys stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. I have that giveaway that I'm doing for the uh, CamSafe Z14 anti-theft bag. Go check that video out now. Subscribe, like, and share. Please subscribe, then you get the notifications of the new videos. I'm really going to try and do as often as I can a video a day, but at least every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned. I'll talk to you soon. You keep watching. I'll keep making videos.